Welcome to the spooky and enchanting world of digital art. Just in time for Halloween, I am Mr. 23 and in this video I will show you how to craft a forest witch in Photoshop. Let's dive into the forest and let the creativity flow. For the bottom part, let's use this photo and give it an angle. Now let's add a mask and remove the top area. And for this corner, let's uh, duplicate the layer and drag it here and make it uh, bigger. Behind everything, I want a forest. So uh, I found this picture with those trees and let's place it behind the grass. First thing, let's add a levels adjustment layer and drag the white slider to the left. Let's add a selective color adjustment layer where we are going to modify the neutrals and the layer should be set to color. Then with selective color again, I will change the color of the trees and with the brightness and contrast, I will uh, decrease the brightness and I'm going to use this uh, cyan-ish color. Then I'm going to add some uh, lights here on this area by using exposure. So I'm going to add an exposure adjustment layer, drag the exposure and then I'm going to invert the mask by clicking on invert and with a soft round brush I am going to uh, paint here a bit on this area to add a bit of light. And to match the colors that I have behind on the forest one I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to select a sign color from the trees and I'm going to paint on this area. And then I'm going to change the blending mode to color. And I'm going to double click on the layer and I'm going to hold alt and drag the slider more to the right. Then on top of everything I'm going to add another selective color and then with levels I'm going to darken up everything again. Then here on this area I want to have some light that is coming from behind the trees. So I'm going to create a new layer and set it to color dodge. Then I'm going to sample like a color from uh, this area from the trees and I'm going to paint over there, double click on the layer and apply the blend if so the color will be uh, dispersed more. So I added those three zombies and I'm going to add a mask and mask them into the grass. So with a grass brush I'm going to paint on the mask where uh, zombies are touching uh, the ground. Then let's dark them up by using uh, levels. Then to change their colors I'm going to use a selective color adjustment layer where I'm going to modify the colors uh, because we have some lights that uh, are coming from behind. We should have some uh, of that light on the zombies. So I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to fill it uh, with uh, black and then I'm going to set it to linear dodge. Then I'm going to take the brush tool and I'm going to uh, select a color from uh, the light part and then I'm going to paint on the sides uh, where that uh, cyan will touch uh, the zombies uh, parts. And then double click on the layer and hold alt and drag the right slider more to the right. And then for the rim lights I'm going to repeat uh, the process. I'm going to create a new layer, fill it with uh, black set the blending mode to linear dodge, then take the brush tool and then I'm going to paint some uh, rim lights on this uh, zombie. And I'm going to repeat the process to the other zombies also. Then I will darken up everything using uh, brightness and contrast and then with an exposure I will add more glow here uh, on this uh, area uh, where uh, the light is coming from behind. Then I will add some grass in front of uh, the zombies and on the right side and I will uh, change the color using selective uh, color uh, where I will gonna modify the neutrals and with levels I will darken up that uh, grass. I'm going to add now some atmospherical fog to blend everything much better together and I just painted with that cyan some fog on top of everything that I have so far. I want to add some trees in front of them in the foreground so in the left side I'm going to add this uh, tree and on the right side uh, this one. First thing 
I darken up the right uh, tree a lot because it's uh, closer to our eyes and it should be the darkest one of all. And then with a layer set to color, I paint it with a cyan color. On the left, I did the same thing. And then with a layer set to soft light, so create a new layer, set it to soft light and then take the brush tool and select the darkest color of the tree. In my case, uh, something like that. And I'm going to paint uh, on the left side uh, of my tree because that part of the tree should be uh, the darkest one. In front of everything I added uh, those uh, leaves and uh, I'm going to do the same thing, make them darker using levels and with selective color I modified a bit the cyan and magenta and I will add some Gaussian blur to them uh, around 4% because uh, they are in uh, the foreground and they should be blurred because they are close to our eyes. Then from this picture I selected uh, this warrior and I added her here in my uh, artwork. First thing with the uh, hue and saturation I desaturated uh, some areas because uh, from the other picture from here she had uh, you know some light sources that we don't have in this one. So uh, with hue and saturation I desaturated uh, those parts and uh, I get rid of uh, those uh, light sources. Another hue and saturation, I modify the color of her clothing. Behind her, on a layer set to color dodge, I painted with a cyan color and I made that area uh, much brighter. And then I started to paint, uh, manually paint some hair. Then uh, behind her, I uh, manually drew a cape and later on I decided to change this uh, color to a more magenta color. And then I added levels to add some contrast. I darken up her a bit. With selective color, I changed again the neutrals. I added more shadows by uh, using that uh, layer set to soft light. Then by using the same uh, methods with uh, the linear dodge, I added uh, those rim lights and also highlights. And because she's floating, I created those uh, branches that are holding her. So you create a new solid color adjustment layer and um, let's uh, use a dark color, something like that. Let's invert the mask. I'm going to take uh, the brush and uh, use uh, one of the brushes, doesn't really matter. In my case, I used one of uh, IMAD uh, Awan brushes, uh, this and uh, one. Let's increase the flow back to 100% and the white color. I'm going to create just a weird uh, shape and uh, I'm going to uh, draw other uh, branches, smaller ones. So uh, I'm just going to decrease the size of my brush and I'm just going to paint uh, around those uh, tiny uh, little branches. I'm going to create a new layer and clip it inside by holding Alt and click between the layers. And then I'm going to take another brush to create some kind of texture for this branch. I have this uh, brush from Imad Awan. I'm going to give you the link so you can download it from him. He offers so many brushes for so many years for free and you should check it out. So I'm going to paint inside with this texture to, as I said, imitate somehow the tree uh, the branches uh, texture. You can take your time with it, but for this tutorial to make it short, let's stop here with uh, those uh, textures. And another thing that uh, I did was to uh, add uh, inner shadow. So I'm double clicking on the layer and here on uh, the inner shadow, I'm going to um, change the blend mode to linear dodge and I'm going to uh, use a 90 degree angle and you can change this color to adjust it uh, accordingly to the light source that you have in your art or and of course you can you know make it uh, you can make it uh, bigger by modifying the the distance and also the angle and also of course the opacity so um this is how I create it. So the funny part is that now if you have all those uh, settings done like the inner shadow and if you want to continue you can take again the brush that you first used and you can paint with the white color and it will still have that uh, 
inner shadow applied to the branches and then of course I added more fog on top and uh, I darken up a bit the sides of uh, like a vignette the sides of my artwork to have the focus on my uh, character and then I added some uh, magic glow on uh, her hands a glow that uh, I'm using in almost all my designs you should check out this video if you want to learn how to create this type of glow and then because we have this type of glow I uh, went back to my trees and uh, added the some glow on them on the left I added uh, some glow some uh, reddish and also some cyan glow on the left tree using that method with linear dodge and also on the right tree I did the same thing as our forest witch comes to life remember that the magic of creativity has no limits if you enjoy this mystical journey don't forget to like share and subscribe for more enchanting content I'm Mr. 23, see you in the next bewitching adventure.